since the landmark referendum in 1967, the fight for equality for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people has been long and relentless, weighed down by the injustices of our nation's history. The hope for genuine change has often been met with the disappointment of empty promises. We apologise. The year was 2008, and on February 13, Mr Rudd made a formal apology to Australia's First Peoples, acknowledging the shame and harm of the stolen generations. For the pain, suffering and hurt of these stolen generations, their descendants and for their families left behind, we say sorry. To the mothers and the fathers, the brothers and the sisters, for the breaking up of families and communities, we say sorry. And for the indignity and degradation thus inflicted on a proud people and a proud culture, we say sorry. It was an apology that was long overdue and gave hope for the future. The Prime Minister's statement declared a vision to close the gap on health and life expectancy for Australia's First Peoples. In 2008, the Council of Australian Governments committed $4.6 billion towards that vision. All across Australia, communities banded together to close the gap. It's not about us, as a mainstream health service, going into a community and saying, this is what we want you to do. It's about, let's work together. Organisations rose to the challenge, committed to making change happen in our lifetime. When the Prime Minister announced that they were going to do a progress report on the Close the Gap commitments, the Close the Gap steering committee decided that we would also pull together an independent report which would shadow the government's report. The steering committee thought it was very important to get the, um, the advice and expertise from the people which work on the ground in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health. The report found that it's still a long way to go to live up to these commitments. We advocated for community-owned and run health services to improve health outcomes for our First Peoples. One of the challenges is always going to be getting it right at the local level, uh, listening to the different needs at local areas, like it's not about having one size fits all. Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people came together to close the gap. It's really vital that we do have our non-Aboriginal health workers in our mainstream service Gaining an understanding of what it takes to maintain that partnership. From little things, big things grow. And it's happening right here. We have strived to reach the bright future that Rudd envisioned. A future where we harness the determination of all Australians, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, to close the gap that lies between us and life expectancy, educational achievement and economic opportunity. But after 10 years of striving, that future remains out of reach. What I would hate to see is the issue of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health falling to the back burner, to governments um, not being interested anymore, to the public you know, getting a little bit fatigued with what is obviously a really difficult situation. It's not just a, a fad or an issue that's important now, it's something that matters to communities because it's, it's their people's lives. What we'd like to see from government is a commitment with Close to Get Within a Generation that it remains front and centre um, for, all, for the next 20 years. It needs to have a very focused approach and it needs to be relevant to the communities which it is actually designed to, to improve the health for. Our governments are failing Australia's First Peoples. Since 2008, when the government first set targets to close the gap, only three of the seven targets are on track. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander leaders have expressed bitter disappointment at worsening health indicators.
We must demand that governments work closely with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and organisations to redesign the strategy, ensuring that it's sustainably resourced and followed through. In the decade since our government first pledged to close the gap on Indigenous health and life expectancy, the gap has only grown bigger. Our work is not yet done.